following podcast was recorded on Thursday, November 10th, 2022, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to Talking Data. I'm Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our commentator, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim will discuss the CPI report and the market reaction. CPI came in below expectations for just the fourth time since the beginning of 2021. Jim, what did the CPI report say? Yeah, so let's go through the charts. Um, we've got some charts here. The first chart is just the year-over-year -year change in CPI. Um, it is now down to a 7.7% year-over-year gain. The peak was in March at 9.1%. That's in blue. In orange, you show the um, core number. That peaked at a new 40-year high last month in September at 6.6%. <coughs> it down it downticked to 6.3% this month. That's actually the third highest number ever. There was a 6.5 in March. Um, so CPI is showing more and more signs that it might peak. Go to the next chart. Uh, this shows you what you had just mentioned. The orange line on the top is the, uh, the forecast for CPI. And the bottom in the blue bars are what was actual. And the bottom bars are the difference. The red bars are when it comes in below forecast. This is only the third time since February of 21, the fourth time since the beginning of 21, that we've seen a miss. Misses are rare. We don't see very many of them, but we did get a miss here. So the market is excited that there is a sign that inflation is peaking. Uh, and uh, some of the data is supporting that. The biggest piece of data that is supporting that is um, owner's equivalent rent, which is about 30% of CPI, went from eight tenths to six tenths. That differential from down two tenths from 8.8 to 0.6 is actually the biggest drop in that index month to month since 2020. So that without that, if we had printed another eight tenths, each one of these numbers would have been a tenth higher. Uh, and then we would have been on expectations and we might have had a very different reaction, which we'll talk about in a second. But I've always argued the idea that inflation is peaking is not really an important forecast. It better be peaking because if it is going to consistently stay at eight or nine percent, we are in a world of hurt in these markets. The more important question is when it starts down, is it going all the way back to two percent? or is it going to stop some number higher? Now, almost every podcast we talk about this, I'm in the persistent camp. I think it's going to stop somewhere higher. But if we go to the next chart, uh, this shows you Wall Street's forecasts. <laughs> so the black line is CPI, and the uh, all the colored lines are all the forecasts that Wall Street gives for CPI. Every chart, every forecast, you know, and they sort just so you know what we're looking at, they survey a 70-ish economist. They ask them, what do you think inflation is going to be the next six quarters? And this is the median for every one of those six quarters. Wherever inflation is, it's going straight back to 2%. It is always going back to 2%. I highlight in blue the last chart, right, the last update, which was last month, in um, just a couple of weeks ago in late October. So Wall Street has always been of the belief that inflation is transitory. Even though we're coming up on the one-year anniversary, it was late late November of last year when Paul said it's time that we you know uh, retire the word transitory. Uh, Wall Street still believes it, and it comes by different iterations. It goes by the word pause or pivot or step down or transitory. What they all mean is that big black line that you're looking at, that rise of inflation nine in percent. That's it. It was a one-time deal. It's going to turn around, and when it shows signs of peaking. It's going to do like every one of those colored lines. It's going to make a beeline straight for 2%, and we can stop talking about inflation forever. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I've talked about this in other podcasts, that I think inflation is more persistent. The cycle is turned with the pandemic. I'll leave it at that. 
um, without uh, getting into it a little bit more than that. Does it change the outlook for the Fed? It changes the outlook of the Fed uh, one way, but not necessarily another way. So if we go to the first chart, uh, this is the chart of the, um, uh, this is the terminal rate. That is where is the market, where does the market expect the Fed to stop? The blue line is the terminal rate. The green line on bottom is the month of the terminal rate. We use the Fed fund futures, you know, just so it's easier to understand it. Maybe if you're familiar with Excel, this is an equal max function of every contract out to the end of 24. What is the highest point at any moment between every contract out to December 24? And it was 514 last week. It was 509 um, yesterday, and it's 485 now. What does that translate to? Before the CPI report, the market was pricing in that the terminal rate would be between five and five and a quarter because the Fed works in those quarter point increments. Now it thinks it's going to be between 475 and five. Remember, we're 375 to four, so we're still 100 basis points below that. And it thinks that that will be reached in May. That's what the green, the green bars or the green line on the bottom shows. So from the terminal standpoint, you had one tick down in the terminal rate. Uh, uh, you know, check back in a week or two to see if that holds. So not much movement there. But if you go to the next chart. The next chart shows you the probability that the Fed will raise rates 75 basis points uh, at the December 14th meeting. And that collapsed from 47%, call that 50-50. And the other 50, the other, the, the other 53% is a 50 basis point uh, hike to 12%, or an 88% chance they're going to go 50. This is what got the market all excited. The Fed is going to downtick to 50. Uh, and what the market's thinking is, if you remember back to the other chart with the forecast, look, they believe that this inflation thing is a one-time deal anyway. So the minute that the Fed downgrades or steps down from 75 to 50, that's it. Then they're going to go to zero. Then they're going to start cutting rates. Then they're going to realize this was a gigantic mistake that there is no inflation problem. It was an artifact of reopening the economy and it's over. That's what the market thinks. That's what the consensus is. And the market is so desperate for this because what has been driving these markets for the last several years has been cheap money. I've said on many of these podcasts, the market is a junkie and it wants a fix. And the fix it wants, its drug, is stimulus from the Federal Reserve. It wants cheap money. And today's report got the market to roll up its sleeve and say, I'm ready, Jay, give it to me, give it to me. I want my <laughs> stimulus. And so it's all excited for it right now. So tell us more about today's big reaction. <laughs> so if we go to the next chart, um, this shows a, a tick chart of the S&P 500 futures. Now I looked it up a little bit, you know, it's kind of hard to do this on the fly, but the next trade after the CPI report was up 100 handles or two and a half percent. That's what you see in that chart. I don't think I can, I cannot find an example of the market next trade being two and a half percent higher. Heck, I can't even barely find any that it's two and a half percent lower. And that would make more sense because there's calamities that happen in markets that would cause that to happen. And so this is the importance of the CPI report. The Fed meeting doesn't move you 100 handles in, a, in, in one trade. The CPI report does. That's why the title of this podcast is the de facto Fed meeting was at 8.30 Eastern today. The Fed announced, or the, the result of that de facto meeting is the Fed's going to step down from 70 basis points to 50. The trade will settle December 14th, which is the next Fed meeting. If we jump to the next chart, reason that you're probably getting this is the casinoization of these markets. They are, they've been casinoized like we've never seen. This chart comes from Goldman Sachs. This chart shows the percentage of S&P 500 options, so just the S&P contract, which is far and away the largest, that expire within 24 hours and the, um, and the percentage of trading. The percentage of trading is 44%. So on any given day, 44% of the 
of the traded options expire the next day. Uh, that's up from something like 5% 10 years ago. And pre-pandemic, it was like around 10%. This is lottery ticket stuff. It's great we're talking about this the week that we had the $1.9 billion lottery because Wall Street is nothing but a lottery. Everybody buys these options, usually call options, that expire in two days and they pay one penny for them. And what are they hoping for? Something like today. Now my one penny option is worth nine cents. I made 900% in the next trade. And so this is the casinoization. This is why that the option was market is being consumed by all of this rank short-term speculation, most of it by retail, a lot of retail, that you see these outsized moves because when the market sees CPI is done, here comes a tidal wave of retail money to buy tons of options. We're gonna front run it up 100 handles of two and a half percent the next trade. Just to kind of reiterate this, the final chart shows um, the Goldman Sachs puts together a, a stock index of the most shorted stocks. That's the blue line on the top. The uh, red and green bars on the bottom is the daily change. The most shorted stocks are up nine and a half percent. This and this is the biggest move since April of 2020. This is a classic short squeeze. Does that mean there's a capitulation in the market's turn? Look, in May we had an eight percent short squeeze, and that didn't stop the bear market. Uh, we had a seven percent one, and that was in the middle of a bull market. The, it's not that the nine percent signals what's coming next. It's the character. It's the characteristics of the rally. This is hot money chasing, squeezing shorts, running the market up, trying to front run retail investors that bang around in options that expire in a day or two. That's the nature of this market. What the market wants is it wants earnings to fall apart. It wants people to lose their jobs. It wants the economy to go into recession because then the Fed will ease and the response to all that terrible news will be a soaring stock market. That's how backwards everything is because of the casinoization of the market. So when you see the CPI report back off like we saw today, everybody believes that it's just one off anyway. So the Fed is going to be on a road, to, the CPI is going to be on a road to 2%. The Fed, whether they know it or not, is going to be on a road to stopping and then eventually cutting. And the casinoization of the market, you have the immediate reaction, the next trade in this market. Now, we've seen this on the downside. We've seen this on the upside. Look, we saw this on the downside last week during the Fed meeting when Jay Powell made some hawkish comments. We saw the market do pretty much the opposite of what it's doing today. And this will continue as long as we have this setup in the marketplace right now. Bottom line is, if you're not into the short-term stuff, what are you supposed to make of it? The real question comes down to, is this inflation peak, which is not the hard call, going to stop at 2% or some level higher? You know, cheap energy, cheap goods, cheap labor, that's been my, uh, my, my, my battle cry that the economy has changed, that, if, that things have got much more friction, prices are stickier. Yes, they're coming down. Look, if they're going to stay at 8%, we were going to fall another 50% in the stock market, and interest rates are going to go to 8 or 9%. So obviously, if we stayed there, it would have been a calamity. And I didn't think we were. But I do think that this descent will be much slower on inflation, will stop much higher on inflation. And the Fed will be slow to turn because one of the things Jay Powell has been very clear on is part of his strategy is he wants a reverse wealth effect. He doesn't want us feeling good about the profits in our brokerage accounts and running out and spending money. And so if inflation starts down, but the stock market soars, he's going to try and talk hawkish to keep it from soaring because then we start spending money and the inflation rate stays high. So that's the yin yang that we've got going from here. So the bottom line is, yes, inflation is peaked, but do you think it's on a straight line to 2%? And the market reaction that you see is because of the casinoization of the market. All the retail traders, well, not all of them, but the, re the options market is now consumed by retail traders that are just trading options that expire in a few days. They're just doing nothing but buying lottery tickets. 
those that bought lottery tickets yesterday, especially on short on the most shorted stocks, won today because of the CPI report, but it becomes somewhat self-fulfilling. Those are the same options traders that got massacred last week when Jay Powell spoke hawkishly, and we'll see what next week brings for them. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today, and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions about Arbor Research, Bianca Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks everyone, and have a great day.